So I was a bit stuck on creating a color system for my design system for a product that I'm working on. And mostly it's because I had some existing colors that I had to incorporate. I also needed to use Tailwind for my devs. And so I had a lot of existing stuff and new colors that I wanted to create. I found a lot of tutorials about how to generate color styles and how to use existing color systems, but nothing really on how to do it from scratch. I'm going to show you my entire process of how I first pick a color palette, then how I turn that into color scales, how I turn that into styles, and then variables so you can do things like use color modes and theming. Let's get into it. So this is Tailwind CSS's version 4.1 default color palette. And briefly, if you don't know, Tailwind is just a framework that developers love, and it includes all of these colors in code. So they don't have to think about picking all of these scales and all of these different shades and tints for products. So it's something that's very easy to use but most designers like to have this customized or use their own brand colors. Now, if you're wondering why these numbers, well, Tailwind inherited Google Materials 50 through 900 tonal ladder because it already mapped to 11 perceptually even light to dark stops. It also keeps class names short and sortable. It leaves plenty of numeric gaps for future shades like the later 950 that was added. It also helps avoid any conflict that a literal 1 to 10 or 1 to 100 scale might create with percentages and other utility scales that are often used. So Tailwind's numbering isn't mathematical, but it also isn't totally random. However, it is a perceptual ramp. That's why the ramp can change, but the goal is to change the perceived lightness in roughly even steps while keeping the hue nearly steady. Ideally, what you want to be able to do is map your own colors to Tailwind. So here we are in Figma, and we're just going to take this step by step. The first thing that we need is our main color palette. So first, we're going to make a frame here, and this will be our color palette. I'm going to draw a rectangle, and yes, please note that I'm drawing a rectangle and not a frame, and there's a reason for this that I will share a little later. I'm going to give these a rounded corner here. According to my color palette picking method, which uses HSB to perfectly balance these colors, all I'm doing is duplicating these rectangles. Then I'm selecting the next one. I'm coming over here and switching this to HSB. Just move the slider. Now I'm not going to move any of the other values. That is going to keep everything balanced with the same brightness and saturation. And that is what gives colors this sense that they match and they go with each other. So you can use this method to pick them by hand. If you already have a color palette, you can use that or you can generate something. And that's the beauty of this technique. You are not held back by anything. You'll know exactly how to turn this into variables by the end. So I'm just gonna speed run this using this technique. There is our color palette. You'll wanna have those main brand colors like your primary, your secondary and other tertiary colors. And then you'll also wanna have your alert colors. So, you know, maybe that red and that orange and that yellow for things like notifications and warnings. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and add a heading here. This shows the primitive colors, which are the brand colors or the base hues that make up the main color palette of your UI designs or your color system. And here we have our swatches. Now, in order to make our color scales, we need to take each one of them. So let's say this blue, for example, and we need to make a color scale or a color ramp out of it. This scale or this ramp will have steps. So for example, the total amount of steps in Tailwind are 11. The base color will always be in the middle at the 500 mark. Then anything that's to the right will be a shade, which means it's darker than this 500 color. And then anything to the left, which is 50 through 400, is called a tint, which means the colors are lighter than this 500 mark. So there are a bunch of different ways that you can derive these shades and tints. You can do the old fashioned manual way, where you select the next swatch, and this is the darker shade of 600, and we're gonna fill it with the exact same color as the 500, but we're gonna switch our color mode to HSL. That way we can granularly control the saturation and lightness. And what we're gonna do with this is we're going to take the lightness and we're gonna drop it down about five or 10 increments. So we'll take that from 60 to 50, and now it's a little bit darker. We're gonna do the same thing with the next swatch. We're gonna grab the color from the previous one, which is the 600, and we're going to drag this lightness slider down to about maybe 40. And then we're gonna keep doing it. Now, this one I might want to go a little 
less, so maybe I'll do it by five instead of 10. And depending on how dark you want this, you can go to 20 here, and then maybe a really dark one for the last one that's almost nearly black, that'll be about 10% lightness. So you have a pretty good range there, and you know you can make this a little lighter if you want, it's all up to you. And now on the left side, which are the tints, these are lighter, but we're gonna follow the same formula. We're gonna click on the 500, and then we're gonna take the lightness and we're gonna increase it by about five. So I'll go from 60 to about 65, click on this one from 65 to 70. This one will go from 70 up to 80. Maybe this one will be 85. And then we can have the lightest color about 90 or even 95. So there we've got our ramp and this is how you would do it manually. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily the fastest way or the best way to do it, but this is just so that you have an understanding of how these scales are derived, what the ramp is, what the numbers mean. And now you can take that and speed things up by using a plugin or a color generator or whatever else you'd like. Now, if you need inspiration for picking that initial color swatch or that initial color palette, there's nothing better than getting inspired by real apps and products that are live in the wild. And that's what I absolutely love about Mobin. They catalog and categorize all of these apps and flows and prototypes from the world's biggest companies. You can view by mobile or web app, and there are lots of sorting and filtering options. So you can just look at UI elements, for example, and choose one of these, and you'll be able to see all of the colors that they've chosen to use. You can even view the click-through prototypes so that you can explore around the app. And one of the best parts is that when you find some screens that you like, you can bring these directly into Figma. So you can use their plugin, and now you have these screens in Figma so you can select these colors for your own color palettes. So if you haven't tried Mobin yet, definitely check it out using my link here and in the description below. So most of the color generator plugins will generate nine steps instead of 11. And that works too. It really doesn't matter how many steps, it just kind of matters on what you need for your project. So let me show you an example of how you can use that. I'm gonna to go to plugins here, and I'm gonna to go to color, tint, and shade generator. Then I'm gonna grab this hex, I'm gonna put it in here, and I'm gonna click generate. And it's just gonna make me a simple palette like this. Now I can resize it however I want to and change the width of these you know, make them look more like mine, spread this out some more. So now our middle color again is 500, but this time we have five, six, seven, eight, nine, and over here we have four, three, two, one. So it's just leaving out those far most 50 and 950 shades and tints. And so the last thing that we need to talk about is naming. And that's gonna look something like this, very simple. We're just gonna use the color slash the value with no spaces in between these words or numbers. So for example, we can call it blue 500, or you can give it a fancy name like aqua 700 or mustard 300. So the next thing I'm going to quickly do is go through and create the color scale using my color generator for each one of these. And again, remember you can do it by hand if you need more colors, or you can use one of those other Tailwind color generators. Now, don't forget that I have a course. We teach this kind of practical stuff and how to be a modern day product designer. And this is everything from the UX and the UI to the business and product strategy that is missing for a lot of designers. So if you're interested in that, it's really affordable. It's a wonderful community, and I think it's a very unique experience. And I'd be honored to have you as a student too. There is a link in the description below. Now back to the video. And again, we're gonna use that color tint and shade generator that looks like this to create each one of these color palettes. So again, this isn't the only way to do it. It's not necessarily the fastest way, but you can imagine the flexibility here, your ability to customize things. If you have existing colors that you have to work with, if you have constraints, if you need to tweak colors and things may not be perfectly accessible right now, you're gonna have to test those with an accessibility checker but that can all be adjusted so this is how we do this when we have really expansive projects or you know specific needs so each set of swatches is in a frame that's perfectly fine but you'll see here that everything is named with its hex now we don't want that because what we want to do now is map these colors to tailwind or whatever naming convention you and your developers 
are using. And so the way to do that faster is to do some bulk renaming. Now Figma has this feature built in now, so we don't even need a plugin. So let's say I want to call this one pink. I'm going to select this frame, which currently says generated color palettes. And I'm just going to rename this one to pink. And then I'm going to hit enter and it's going to select all of the nested swatch rectangles. So now what we want to do is just name these with their value. So starting from hundred all the way up through 900. So we're going to take this and we're going to move this over into step two. This is the next phase of renaming. This one's pink. This one's violet. Let's keep going with blue, green. We have yellow and the last one is orange. So we also need to pass these names to the swatches themselves. What I like to do is start by just clicking on the first one, holding down command and dragging down the first row. And then I like to go to the built in Figma option command R and that's going to rename these all to 100. So now over here, we can see that these are all named correctly in order. Next thing we need to do is append the color name. So again, just using the default rename feature, I'm going to come here, select all of them in this row, command R, and then we're going to type the name and then we're going to add a slash and then we're going to append the current name, which is the value and then click rename. So now all of our swatches in that row look just like the naming convention that we talked about before, which is the color and the value lowercase color name slash value, no spaces. Okay. So that's it. So we're going to quickly do the same here, rename it. We're going to say violet slash current name. So the next step is to turn these into styles. So all we're going to do is take all of these colors and we're going to use this plugin called Styler. This is going to make it really easy. So we're going to come over to plugins, search for Styler. There it is. And we're going to generate styles. So we need to select our layers and we're just going to select all of these just like that. And then hit enter to select all of the rectangles and then come back here. Styler generate styles. And there we go. Just like magic, like in the blink of an eye, it made all of these styles. So we have 54 from yellow, violet, pink, and we're going from 100 down to 900 perfectly ordered. All right, on to step four. So now we're going to create the variables and we're going to make it easy by using a plugin. And this one is called the styles to variables plugin. So we're going to find that plugin styles to variables, click on that. And now you'll see that it's selected all of our styles, all 54 of them. And now we can name this collection. So I'm just going to call this primitive colors. And then there are a few other options here, grouping, binding styles to the variables created, but we're just going to convert these styles into variables. So we'll click that and that's it. 54 color variables created. So now we're going to deselect everything on the canvas, come up to variables. And then here we go. Primitive colors is the collection. There are all of our colors that we created turned into variables. You can go ahead and semantically name those now as well, but that's how easy it is. Now, step five is generating a color style guide from this, because remember we started with these colors and we have the numeric naming convention from tailwind, but none of the hex codes are available for us to view if we needed them because we've renamed these to the value color system and because we've turned them into styles and because these styles also have that color and so do the variables. If we wanted to share this or use this for branding purposes, then we can create an actual style guide that has, you know, this kind of layout with the swatches. So to do that, I'm going to use another plugin and this is step five and we're going to generate this color style guide. So this one's called the variable color style style guide. And for this one, again, we're just going to come over to plugins, look for variable color style guide, and then you're going to see there are two options here. You can pick the color palette. So we're going to pick primitive colors because that's the one we created in our variables. And then there are a few versions here. I'm going to use modern maybe, and then create swatches. So it's going to go to work over here in the layers panel, creating these swatches. And this one is laid out like that. You can run it again if you wanted to create 
Another one and just see what these look like. Classic is the one that I used and it looks like this. So what's great about this too is it, have, it has this cute little navigation menu as well. So it jumps down to the color and you can resize this if you want. You can just come over here and remove that max width and adjust these however you'd like to. And so that way, if you wanted to have them all on one row, you can. I'm making this file available for download. So if you want it, leave a comment and I will send it your way. There are also some great color generating and color testing tools. So you can see your Tailwind colors on components like this. And so if you're interested in that, watch this video next.